Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just Two Acres Farm. Today, me and Henry are finally going to get back to the Super A and put together our new distrib new used distributor. Right, Henry? Yeah. What we're starting with here is a used salvage distributor that I bought off eBay, which is in really good shape, and then we got a whole bunch of new parts for it over here. I prefer to pick these distributors up used versus the new ones because I haven't heard real good things about the aftermarket ones. And then take them all apart, go through them, clean them up, put them back together so I really know what I have. See this O-ring down here, Henry? Yeah. This keeps oil from the drive from getting in the distributor because you don't want oil in all the electrical portions. And we just got to dig that out and put a new one in. Yeah, this one shot it, crumbled apart. It's only 70 years old. Now we got to find a match for it in our O-ring kit here. You want to look for one. So the thickness is important and then the diameter is important. Um, <laughs> huh. let's... let's just put a little ultra slick on this o-ring this is the super sticky engine assembly lube you always want to lube o-rings before you put them in so they don't get torn and, and then this just goes back in the hole this little piece of uh, brass here will come out but we don't need to take it out. Just shove that in there. And we're good. And next you can use the ultra slick and we just want to put a little bit on here and smear it around to prelude that. And then as a final check you just want to eyeball it <laughs> and spin it and make sure it isn't bent because sometimes these are bent and I don't remember checking that when I took it apart. It looks good. Here's the case and before we put it in there's a bushing that goes in here which is just a little spacer and then just slide that right in there check and make sure that it doesn't have play in it you know what I mean side to side yep nice and tight isn't it yeah this one is in good shape and then we got another bushing that goes on the bottom here and then we have this drive gear which goes on here and then we got a pin to secure the drive gear in is it this pin? That's the pin right there. Put it on a block of wood here, and what you want to do with these pins, see it's got a little kink in there, which is good. That'll help keep it in. And then you look for the end that doesn't have the mushroom on it, and that end is mushroom, so that means you want this end to go in first. Make sure everything's lined up. Is it mushroom because people used a hammer to hammer it in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then just tap on it with the hammer, and we'll start it in. It and more? then I have a punch right here just put the punch over it and then you can tap it in you're good and you didn't even break my fingers <laughs> that's good there's no play we're good there so did that just go straight through the drive shaft or the it did it went straight through this shaft and that's what holds the gear in place and it's just friction that holds it in you know it had that little bent spot in it and there you go. Next we'll put it in the vise here so we can start putting the guts in it. Take my advice, put it in a vise. <laughs> oh, you know, that was a dad joke. The next job, Henry, is these advanced weights. And these are, and as the distributor spins faster, as the engines turn faster, these fly outward and change the timing to advance the timing as the engine runs faster. Centrifugal force. Before the weights go in, we got these little bushing washers that set on the pegs. Down here, just like this. There we go. Incidentally, see this 40L here? That's the advance in this distributor. It's a maximum of 40 degrees advance. And the slot, the width of the slot controls how much the weights travel. These come in all different varieties, but I haven't found that it's that important on these old tractors. You can get by with different degrees of advance and just adjust by hand. I'm going to lube up. This is the surface that those weights ride on, the advance weights. Mm. And then lube the pegs up just a little bit here. Because these are places where things turn against each other. Now the advance weights can go in. Ezra's at the door. He says it's warm in there. Let me in. Did you get him? Oh, there we go. 
Yep, now they're fitting. Somebody wants to come in. There you go, Ezra. There you go. <laughs> Which part's next, Ezra? <laughs> the next thing we got here is the cam assembly, and this is what controls the advance as well. In my opinion, Ultra Slick is awesome for lubricating this. It doesn't turn very much. It just turns when it advances and comes back, but this stuff stays put to lubricate the cam. There we go. Yep. Yep. That's the right pace. Peg in the slot. As we're supervising it, supervising, and then we got to put a couple bushing washers on top here. <laughs> And these are quite often missing in old distributors that I take apart, but this one was really complete. As Ezra gets older, he just wants more and more attention, don't you, Ezra? He used to be a loner cat. Not anymore, though. Here are the two advanced springs, which match, surprisingly. <laughs> That's another thing I don't see much in old distributors, is matching springs. And these go right on here, Henry, to hold the weight in. See, that one slid right on. Yeah. You just gotta seat it down in there. Does it matter which direction? Or... Nope, it doesn't matter which direction. He can use that screwdriver -y thing there, the pick, to get it on. There we go. Now it's on. Good, so as the advance, as the weights fly out further, it changes the timing of these cam lobes so that the engine fires a little bit quicker before the pistons are on top dead center because the engine's rotating fast. Next there's this cover plate that goes over this whole mess and one of its functions is to help hold the weights in from flying out of the plane they go in with these little tabs. But the problem with these plates is always you gotta get the screws in and they fall. <laughs> They go all over the place. So Henry, what we have here to deal with them is this fancy little screwdriver here, and it snaps. See this little dinghy who here? See it snaps? So you put the screw in it, and then you pull this, and it holds the screw. And then when you're torquing on the screw, putting it in, it'll automatically unsnap and let the screw loose once you get it started. And then you can put it in the rest of the way with a normal screwdriver. Yeah. We put the screw in there, put the plate down, get the screw started. Oh, why won't you start? You stupid screw. Can you hold that, Henry? You yeah, sure. It's, yeah, you gotta do use kinda, there you go. And you put it up. And then you turn the screwdriver out of that detent hole. There you go. Oh, well, Oops. <laughs> Turn it up there and everything lines up. Get the screw on there. Oh, you're supposed to turn with, okay. Yep, and then you let it go down and it holds it. You can do the honors. Just tighten them up, I'll hold the shaft. Next comes this, which I call the breaker plate, which probably isn't accurate, but that's what I call it. You gotta get this oriented correctly because see this big hole here is where the connection for the points in the condenser comes through the case. So it's gotta sit down there like that. So the first ones we gotta put on here are the clamps that hold the distributor cap on. There's one of them. Hey, I wouldn't be working in the shop if I didn't drop something. Found it. <laughs> what? I found it. We didn't just grab another one, did we? Uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, so we can put this one in. Oh, I always get these things backwards. There you go. So you just got to line it up from inside to outside and put her in. Don't drop the lock washer. Want screwdriver? Sure. You can use the screwdriver to hold it in and then just turn it. There we go. Does it feel like it's going in straight? I hope now it does. Okay. Next part is where the wiring comes through the distributor to the points in the condenser. And you got this complicated mess of nuts and insulators and such that need to go on. I always forget which way they go. I know this side comes apart. 
See, this is a grounding piece of Bakelite, which is an early plastic. And it goes... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And then it goes through the case. Then you got an insulator on the outside. And then you've got a brass washer and a lock washer and a nut. Next job, Henry, is the points and condenser, and I got new Eklund ones from Napa. That's a rotor. Here's the condenser. And then here are the points. And let me show you this, Henry. This is the old points and condenser that came out of it. And the points rapidly open and close. Every time a spark fires, it's because this opens and collapses the electrical field in the coil and then the spark goes Phew. I don't know it's electrical magic but that's the way I understand it but what happens is these get either worn down like this one is or they get all pitted up from the spark jumping across if they're not adjusted quite right and all that heat from the spark winds up pitting these so this is what to look for in worn points and these aren't terrible but Put them in a new set this is the way to go here. Of course, the technology we're working on now is all obsolete. Well, yeah. <laughs> of course, it's on our farm, right? Now everything's electronic ignition, and I never have a problem running points, so I know people say we'll put in electronic ignition, but points are trouble-free for me anyway. See that? And then... As that cam rotates, that's what opens and closes the points. See, so when it hits the top of this lobe here, the points are actually open, and that tells the coil to send out a shot to the plugs. Henry's going to put the other side of the points in. There you go. You don't have to tighten it down a lot for now. We'll adjust it later. Next, the condenser goes in and my limited understanding of how the condenser works is it helps to keep the points from arcing when they open and close somehow it dampens that and keeps your points from wearing out too soon just tighten that up on the same post as the points go on here I'll hold this we gotta find the hole here <laughs> there we there. go everything is in here condenser points here are the cam lobes, and then there's a piece of felt which I took out and soaked and cleaned up in the top here with the idea being that you just put a drop of oil in here every once in a while because this top part rotates on the shaft down below. That's how the timing advances. There's one other thing we need to do though, and that is put grease on the cam, cam grease, which I think is dielectric grease, which is non-conductive grease. And the Eklund points always come with a little thing of cam grease here. A little pack. It's a very small amount. Yeah, we won't even use this much. And we can snack on the rest of it. Oh, that's nice. I'm tired. This is too much work. Hey, I, I have a joke for you. Here we go again. A Roman walks into a bar and holds up two fingers and gets five coffees. How can that be? I don't know. Oh, I get it. He got that one! Five! <laughs> Henry, I think you're getting smarter as you get older. I don't know. Pretty soon you'll be telling me dad jokes. I just take a little bit of that cam grease and put it on a screwdriver. Ah, and of course this never works out, but you want to put it behind the rubbing block so that the rubbing block kind of will draw it in. You don't need very much. So this distributor rotates clockwise. And I got a little pocket of grease right there in the hook on that and we'll clean off the rest of this. Where it made a mess. Now we can adjust the points gap in the feeler gauge 20 thousandths point oh two oh. You know thousands from engineering class, right Henry? Yeah. Henry is an aspiring engineer. What kind of engineering? Mechanical. 
Um, so far, yeah. Mechanical. We'll adjust the points. So you bring this rubbing block here to the point of the cam and see, <laughs> we got a lot more than 20 thousandths there. So that's where it comes in that you adjust this side to get your 20 thousandths gap. When the, and can you hold the feeler gauge, Henry? This is where having an extra hand makes all the difference. Hold it right up there. And I'll adjust that in. Sometimes I have to do this three or four times when I'm working by myself. Okay, you can pull it out. Yeah, it's a little too much. Let's do that again. Oh, that's right on. The coil has two windings in it. So you've got secondary and primary windings and one is high voltage, one is low voltage. So you have 12 volts coming into the coil from the battery. And do you know how a transformer works? No, but I know what it does. <laughs> it ups the voltage. So that, that, that 12 volts winding around another larger coil brings the voltage in the inner coil up to however many thousands of volts it is to make the electricity jump the gap. And this grounds out, alternatively grounds out the coil to make it release its charge. No, I got that all messed up, but you know, it's enough to know how it works. Sort of. If we turn this every time those points open like that, it tells the coil to fire. And then it's closed, and then the next plug and line comes up, fire, and then back. That's all that happens really fast as the engine's turning. Next, we just have a dust cover which goes on. And then I've got the old cap which I'm going to put on here for the coat of paint that it's going to get after it's all together here. I have to look down holes. What I see that makes all the difference is that IH logo on this one. Really, if you look down in here, I don't know if you can see that, but that's copper. Those contacts down there are copper where the plug wires come in. And on the underside, let me turn this. On the underside, these are copper colored too, and also the center post where the rotor goes. Here's a replacement cap. I'm not using this one, but this is the one that actually came off of it. No IH logo, aluminum on the inside, aluminum contacts on the plugs. I keep saying they don't make things like they used to, but fortunately, this distributor actually is still made, or this cap is still made in the USA. Copper contacts on the plugs, copper contacts down here, much better quality. No IH logo though. No, no IH logo. The thing would probably cost $20 more if they had to license the IH logo. Huh. That's okay. But just to finish this, this is the rotor it goes on. You see there's a flat spot here and there's a flat spot in the rotor and it just fits on here. And then the cap goes on of course and that's timed by this little slot here which lines up with this slot here. And this side of the rotor presses on this contact right here. And this side of the rotor sweeps around and contacts, well almost, comes very close to contacting these posts here. So every time this spins around and contacts a post, you have a plug firing and you've got juice coming into this cap in the center post, which is connected to the coil. So this is what's feeding the rotor right here. So that just goes on like that. And these two clamps go on here and you have a distributor. And the last thing on this, Henry, is there's a little plug that goes right in here. And what happens is every, this is goofy to internationals, but every so often you're supposed to take this plug out and then put a grease circ in here and squirt a shot of grease in here. And it flows around the bushing in here and it'll actually squirt out this hole on the other side so you can't overfill it. Because the last thing you want happening is grease making its way up the shaft and getting splattered all around in here with all the electrical connections. Yeah. So you can go ahead and put that plug in Getting it started is always the hardest part. If it turns easy, you know you're on the right track. If it doesn't, then... There it goes. Yep. And the last part of this that we have is the drive housing. So, the distributor that we just put together goes in here, like this. And then there's a pair of clamps here. And then, this 
gear here meshes with the gear inside the case and makes everything turn. I'll probably turn it backwards. There we go. And these two ears here engage with a gear in the front of the engine that's engaged with the timing gear. So that's how everything turns. And then finally, the coil mounts on here like this. Instead of using this original IH coil, which I think these things are cool as heck the way they're shaped, and it probably still works. Supposedly on eBay it came off a working tractor. You know how that goes. The problem with this coil is it's a six volt coil, so I'd have to put a ballast resistor on it to drop my 12 volt battery voltage to the six volt coil voltage. So what I went and got at Napa is a 12 volt internally resisted, or 12 volt no external resistor required. So I can run 12 volts to this and connect it directly to the points on the coil, the points of condenser without a ballast resistor. You can go either way. So Henry, there's just a couple things we need to do here. Number one, we got another plug and that's the same deal. You take out the plug and you put a grease fitting in here to grease those two gears that are meshing in here. So you can go ahead and put that one in. I went through and cleaned all the cavity out in here and I just let it soak overnight in the parts cleaner in a cup filled with parts washing fluid and that softens everything up and you can rinse it all out. That's good. Good? Yep. Okay. And then we have this gear. We put a little ultra slick on here on this end. And slide that in to the bushing. Nice, nice check for tightness and they're nice and tight and then before we put the distributor on the final time we'll coat this with grease and slide it in there to lubricate see where that gear meshes in there yeah I guess it's as simple as that <laughs> one thing I think is really important about learning this old technology although it may be obsolete in new production the principles are the same. The principles of electricity and how ignition works on a car, although, you know, it's changed dramatically. If you know the basics or the early ones first, then it's easier to learn the later ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, if there's any moral to the story, it's that. And plus, these are very durable. Do you have any final thoughts, Henry? No. You're sick. You want to go back inside, probably. It's getting cold in here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and yeah, in a future video, we'll be putting it back on the tractor probably sometime this week. Have a great day.